it's quite likely that you may have some VEX motors or sensors lying around that have damaged wires or connectors missing pins like this one here. But as this motor itself is still perfectly fine, we can inexpensively and quickly repair the connector and keep using that motor. All the parts and tools you'll need for this, you can get at robosource.net. There's a link in the description. And we'll be using these gold-plated pins and plastic housings. These pins here, you can get them in both male and female type. And if you're looking for them locally, some hobby shops might have what you need, but just make sure you're getting the gold-plated type. Most of the ones you'll find are not gold-plated, and in RC projects, chances are you'll just be plugging something in once, whereas in VEX robots, you're unplugging and plugging wires all the time, and the non-gold-plated the non type are known to wear out and lose contact over time, so just make sure you're getting the gold-plated ones. And these plastic housings here, you can get them in two, three, or four pin, depending on what you need. And you may have noticed that the VEX wires have a key on the side that slides into the cortex. Unfortunately, these keyed connectors are custom to VEX and you can't get them anywhere else. You may have seen some keyed servo connectors, but these are actually a mirror of the VEX ones. So we'll have to be using these non-keyed ones here. They are, they do work perfectly fine and are completely legal in the VEX robotics competition. Uh, in fact, if you have some really old VEX wires, you may notice that they actually used to make them with these non-keyed connectors as well. And if you do want to keep your key connector, you will just have to reuse the one previously, which is completely doable, but I would recommend getting some new ones in case they do break. The tools we'll be using is this ratcheting crimp tool here. It's very useful and not too expensive. I'd highly recommend getting one because without one of these, it can be tricky to crimp the pins on. If you're looking on eBay or Amazon, there are many that do look very similar to this one, but most of them are not intended for this type of pin that we're going to be using. So before you order one, just make sure that it will work well and create a proper crimp with these pins we're using. And then you'll also just need a normal wire stripper, which you can get pretty much anywhere. First thing that we'll want to do is remove the old housing from the existing wire. So if you look carefully, you'll see these little tabs here that you just need to lift them up slightly while applying pressure to the wire and then pull it out. It's a little bit tricky, but if you get in there, lift the tab up, apply pressure to the wire, it'll pull right out. Um, I'm just using a utility knife, a small screwdriver works as well. Next, what we'll have to do is snip these existing pins off. You do have to replace all of them, even if only one is damaged, because if the wires are different length, they won't fit back into the housing. Uh, you will notice these pins have a top and a bottom side, so make sure you keep in mind where the top and the bottom is, and don't get that mixed up for when you're repairing it. So we'll just snip these guys off as close as we can to the pin, as such. And we won't be needing these anymore. Next we need to strip the ends of these wires. So you can just split them apart a little bit. And these wires, the VEX wires, are 22 gauge. So you'll want to use the appropriate slot on your wire stripper. And then strip off about 4 millimeters of insulation on each end. And then do that on each wire. When you get your crimp pins, they'll be in a strip like this, so you can just bend it back and forth and it'll come right off. And if we look at the pin, you'll notice that there's an opening on the top here that the wire is going to go into. And then there's two parts that are going to be crimped, a small one and a large one. The large one near the end is where you want the insulation to go, and the smaller one is where you want the strip part of the wire to go. So the wire is essentially going to be sitting in the pin just like this. We're going to be using this smaller slot on our crimp tool and holding the tool in this orientation you're going to want the wire coming upwards from it from our perspective. So what we're going to do is insert the, the crimp pin into the tool like this, close the tool a little bit, it'll just hold it in place. Now we're going to take the wire, insert it into the housing, remember you, in which orientation you want the pin in based on the way it was before. You're going to insert it the distance we'd looked at before, and then squeeze the tool, crimp, until it releases, and then it'll open up. Once you've crimped all of your pins onto the wires, you're going to want to check that you've got a nice crimp. The whole connector has been crimped. I find it's easier just to put the pin into the tool and crimp it, not worrying too much about the alignment the first time. And if you don't quite hit the spot the with the first crimp, you can always put it in and crimp it a second time. You also want to make sure that your crimped pins are straight and they're not deformed in any way. Otherwise, they might not fit into the housing. And if that's the case, you may need to adjust your crimp tool. And I've linked to a video on screen for that. 
So once you've crimped all the pins, you want to line up the wires, straighten them out a bit. If they're not perfectly the same length, it should still be fine. And then we'll take one of these housings here, slide it right onto the pins, push them in. And you'll hear that click, which is that tab locking them in. If you give them a light tug, they won't budge. And there we go, we've repaired the connector on this motor. You can also get some 2-pin uh, or 3-pin cable from RoboSource and make your own extension wires uh, using the same process. Just make sure that they're the same length as the VEX ones, and those are competition legal as well. So it takes a little bit of getting used to this process, but once you've gotten the hang of it, it's actually very fast and easy to make these connectors and repair some motors or sensors or wires. So if you have, if you have any questions, you can send us an email, support at robosource.net, or feel free to post a comment.